All right, Shalom, Shalom. <clears throat> First and foremost, I want to start by saying, Ka Halayim La, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Bahashem, Raka Kodash, double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone, who rule and teach well, must peace, love, and salutations to the brothers on this work in truth and in sincerity. Shalom. <clears throat> this is the brother of the top back again through the spirit with another lesson. And um, this lesson is inspired by the chariots of israel um because they play a very key part the main part in the salvation of the nation of israel ultimately the elect of israel so those as you can see the title is vehicles of salvation because that's what the chariots are they are that tool if you will that the lord is going to use to deliver the nation of israel out of the captivity of Babylon the Great and America because there is no other way to deliver the Israelites that are going to be living, the elect that are going to be living in that time because simultaneously as they're being delivered, the world, the, the, the <clears throat> not the world, but America and certain other parts of the world are going to be hit by missiles thermonuclear missiles which is going which is the judgment of Yahweh Bashim al upon Esau in America for all the bloodshed that has been done to the nation of Israel so let's get let's get some precepts to back up that fact and Lord willing this lesson is edifying so I went to Google and I typed in swing low sweet chariot which brothers already know about this song swing low sweet chariot but when I went down and look it says people also ask it says what Bible story is swing low sweet chariot so in the Bible, the prophet Elijah was carried to heaven by a chariot of fire at the end of his life. Swing Low Cheat, Sweet Chariot is also the title of an African-American spiritual of slave origins because ultimately they knew they was in captivity. Whereas we, our people are serving slavery under the Edomites and they will see us uh, singing that song, Swing Low Sweet Chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Where I looked over the river Jordan it's talking about the nation of uh, the land of Israel. Let me see. Here it is. Swing low, sweet chariot. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Uh, hold on. Um, it says, if you get there before I do, the brightest day that ever I saw, um, I'm sometimes up and sometimes down, coming for to carry me home a band of angels coming forth to carry me home tell all my friends so as you can see the point being as it says a band of angels a band of angels and also another key part I looked over the river Jordan. Where's Jordan at? Where is the river Jordan? As you can see, where the Jordan Jordan River is at. So it's through the spirit. Yeah, here's another. It's through the spirit that this song is more proof that we are the real children of Israel. But um, let's go get that that account in the book of um Second Kings, Second Kings chapter two, verse. I'm gonna start at verse nine. It says, "And it came to pass when they were going over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee.'" And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. 
And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou shalt, if thou see me go, if thou see me when I go, I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and the horses, you know, and the horses of fire and parted them asunder, both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So that chariot of fire and the horses thereof is talking about the UFOs. Just the NLT says, as they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared drawn drawn by horses of fire it it drove between the two men separating them and elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven so let's see so it wasn't actually horses it was it was a chariot horse represents power ultimately it was a so-called ufo taking him up into the heaven the same way Yahweh Shai left, it's the same. It's the same thing that happened in Yahweh Shai is what happened to Elijah. He was taken up by a chariot, a so-called UFO, and that's how the the Jake, the nation of Israel is going to be delivered in this time. It's the book of Acts chapter one, verse nine. It says, "And when he spoke, spoke when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, which means what's why they were looking." He was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. This is talking about your house shot because yeah, actually the red letter. They was asking about the kingdom and things of that nature. Um, and after he got done spoken, you know, about them, uh, a prophecy that was going to be fulfilled as being fulfilled. Now there was going to be witnesses to the uttermost parts of the earth, which is on this side of the world. You receive power of the Holy Spirit come upon you. That happened, and it's going to happen again in this time that we're living in now. It said, as you can see, the ascension. Let's look up that word ascension. How did he ascend? How did he get up out of there? You think he a cloud, an actual cloud, just lifted him up? No. The word cloud is symbolic. All right, ascension. It says ascent of Hamashiach, which that just means anointed, from earth into heaven in the presence of his disciples on the 40th day after the resurrection. A rising noun of action from past particle stem of ascendere to mount, ascend, or go up. The meaning action of ascending. So he was literally the same way Elijah. <clears throat> was ascended up into the chariot. Yahweh Shai ascended up into the chariot. So that's symbolic. Well, it's like, that's not symbolic. It's actually literal. He literally went up. Went up into the chariot. Literally went up. So let's go back. It's tab. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. And when, they, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. He ascended. And a cloud, which is not to talk about a literal cloud, is referring to a UFO. This is what took him up. This is what took him up. A chariot. He got taken up into the chariot. The same way, um, the same way the elect are gonna be delivered, because those are the vehicles of salva of our salvation, man. That's the only way we're gonna be delivered. By Yahweh Bashmel Shah. He's gonna show his power.
and the present that in those the angels like going back to that song sweet low sweet cherry the angels are the ones that operate those vehicles and they they have always been in the mist so this is what esau has to worry about this is what keeps him up at night the chariots because they're all they're constantly observing this place known as america the ufo sightings that have increased in uh in america real quick i got this article i just pulled up it says america's ufo hotspots mapped reported ufo sightings per 100k residents so as you can see america is a hot spot for ufo activity man and they got them individually <laughs> And this is um Lowndes County, it's lucky. Lowndes County, Georgia. A total of 30 sightings in our area. Let me see. Look, let me see. Look at Atlanta. Should be Fulton County. Decap County got 51 sightings. Atlanta got a 285 sightings of chariots, man. Texas. Oh wait. A lot of activity in over there so as you can see america is a hot spot for activity when it comes to ufos because those are the eyes of the lord uh, watching america watching this place uh, let me see real quick Is it Psalm 34 and 7? No, 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 it's a lot. Wrong precept. It's Amos 9 and 8. It's Amos 9 and 8. It says, Behold the eyes of your heart, but the Slack. Um, forgive me. Um, Amos chapter 9, verse 8. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord Yahweh are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Saving that, I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, said Yahweh. So the eyes of the Lord are the angels. And they're going, they're constantly reporting all the evil that's going on in America. Because the bulk of the, the tribes are in America. Because the Lord brought us all over here. Um, So the angels are reporting all the matters that go on in America. And they're also causing things to happen. All right, it says the American West is the place to go if you want to, want to spot some UFOs, it's especially, no surprise, Lincoln County, Nevada, Nevada, home to the fabled Area, Area 51, a top secret UFO base. Oh no, this article was brought out in February of February 8th, 2024, so that was this year. Discussions and reports of UFO or the more and more in turn UAPs unidentified air, anonymous phenomena have been going have been going more mainstream in recent years amidst a push for answers for lawmakers and others. Some you view UAPs as a national security concern. What people are seeing out there could be experimental craft from blah blah blah. No, it's the angels. It's the how Bashmel Shah. Commercial and military pirates have also been increasingly public about their inexplicable sightings that exceed change from decades past when pilots who talked openly about such matters were often ostracized. So the truth is coming out and it's being more clear that there is something up there. And all you got to do, oh, they had that, that 
senator that came out recently and said the chair the ufos are the angels of god let me see ufos angels of god let's see there was a senator that said that senator said ufos are angels I forget who exactly um said that. He said it on a podcast, I believe. You know, I'm pretty sure you brothers probably know what I'm, exactly what I'm referring to. UAPs, UFOs, angels, lawmakers have different views on extraterrestrial explanations. And these devils know the truth, man. They know that those those are not no damn aliens. They know that those are the angels. They just don't want the people to know. But um, I'm not gonna get too deep into that. But there that was there was a senator that came out and said that um the chariots are the UFOs are possibly the angels of God. So let's continue reading Act chapter one, verse nine. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud, which is a metaphor for a UFO, received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, which as he ascended, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which is what, two, two angels which also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven because it was a beautiful sight you just you never probably never seen nothing like that before yahweh shai just you know being taken up by a chariot it says th this same yahweh shai which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven so the same way he left it's the same way he's coming back let's read the nlt, NLT. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Yahweh has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. So the same way he came, well, the same way he left, it's the same way he's coming back. Behold, he coming with clouds. The scripture says that repeatedly. What you think those clouds is metaphor for? The UFOs. Revelations one and seven. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Why is they gonna? Why is everybody gonna see him? Because you know you got the internet, you got the news reports. They gonna be. <clears throat> you got Esau. He got satellites and things in the heavens. When Yahweh make his grand appearance, everybody's gonna see him, man. Just like they showed you in that movie ID four, and many other examples. So like it. Um, behold, he come with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. So that's not a good sign. Why is the people going to be willing? First of all, they're not they're ignorant as the, they're ignorant of the coming of the Lord. They don't know how the Lord is coming back. They don't know when the Lord is coming back. And on top of that, the Lord is going to be executing judgment once he gets back. People are going to be willing because it's going to be a fearful thing. They're not going to know if that cherry is going to be a good thing or a bad thing, but in their spirits, they're going to know it's going to be a bad thing, man. They're going to be scared. People are going to be fearful, just like how they be when they see chariots, man. They're going to be scared, man. You know? All right, let's close that tab. Um, close that tab. All right, I got the swing, low swing cherry. I got that precept. Um, let's go to the um, book of Revelations. Revelation 11, 11, it says, and after three days and light and a half, the spirit of life from the most high entered into him, which is talking about the nation of Israel. And that three days and a half represents a period of 350 years. Um, going all the way back from 1619 until now, um, around about in that area until uh, 1970, 
1969, 1970 is when Esau, well, that ultimately that's when the Lord woke up the nation of Israel, starting with Rabbi Abba Bivins and the commandment keepers. Ultimately, Rabbi Abba Bivins end up separating from the commandment keepers. Um, the Lord put the spirit on him, which we leave through the spirit that is Elijah coming back to um, wake up the nation of Israel. You know, that's when around that time is when America started to decline. And that's when the spirit of life entered into the enter into them which is talking about israel israelites and from that period on uh they the elders of uh, ultimately of old were woken up through the spirit and power and they taught and you know it's been from since, since then it's been a domino effect because the truth has spread and it all started around 1969 or 1970 and that's also when um the lord said he was going to bring esau down when i said i next about the stars because that's when Esau started his Apollo program. All right, this is the Apollo program start due date. Okay, it says 1961. Apollo ran from 1961 to 1972 with the first crew first crew flight in 1968 it entered it, it encountered a major setback in 1967 when a apollo 1 cabin fire killed the entire crew during a pre-launch test so esau started his his apollo program in the 1960s he tried to make his test his nest among the stars and from that period on the 1960s 1970s America has been on a constant decline. Let's, let me type in some. When did America start to decline? Let's see what it says. Decline and fall, how America's society unraveled. Let's see. I was just looking for a simple answer. <laughs> uh, so, just like according to prophecy, America started to, the nation of Israel started to wake up around that time. And that's when Esau started to go decline, go down. You know, he started to decline. Hey, Revelations 11, 11. I ain't really see nothing on here. Wikipedia, American decline. Uh, I just wanted a simple dates. But, but couldn't find anything. But, you know, a period over time, America started to, you know, deteriorate from the inside. It's imploding, if you will, from the inside out. But that's when it started because that's when the word of the Lord started to come in the, on the scene. Revelations 11, 11. It's in, after three days and a half, 350 years, you can do the math. The spirit of life from, from the Most High entered into them. And they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them that saw them. Right, because they wasn't expecting, Esau was not expecting the nation of Israel to wake up, ever wake up. But guess what? The heavenly father Yahweh, Bahashim Yahusha, woke up the nation of Israel as the prophecy states. If you type in um, real quick on your calculator, 1619 plus 350, that'll bring you to the 1969. So that's when, that's when ultimately uh, the spirit of life entered into the nation of Israel and a great fear fell upon them that saw them because these devils are scared. That's why they send in their agent provocateurs. They're trying to halt the word. They're trying to, they're trying to put the nation who's about to sleep, but this is the spirit of the Lord that's doing this, man. You know, you can't stop it. You can't get, do against the truth before the truth. Let me get that real quick for the truth. Now it's another precept. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 30. I mean, it's like a, Second Corinthians 13 and 8, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. 
you can't destroy this, Esau. You can't stop it. It says, for we cannot oppose the truth, but we but must always stand for the truth. You can't fight against this. It says, but the BBE says, because we are or we are able to do nothing against the truth, what is true, but only for it. So Esau, you can't do nothing against this. This is through the spirit and power of Yahweh, but Hashem Yahushua. Let's get that real quick. Book of Acts. Unless happily you be fighting against the Lord, you're fighting against the Lord, Esau. But it, you know, it's okay. It's set up for you to do that anyways. The book of uh, Acts chapter 5. I'm going to get to the point. Verse 38, it says, And I, now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of the Most High, you cannot overthrow it. Let's happily ye be found to fight against God, which is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. NLT says, so my advice is this. Leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing th these things merely on their own, it will come to be, it will soon be overthrown. Exactly. But NLT says, but if, if this is from the Most High, you will not be able to overthrow them. Ye may even find yourselves fighting against the Most High. So that's what Esau is doing. But it's set up for him to do that. He's he's set up to be that great adversary to the Lord. You know, that's what that's Esau's lot. So he's doing what he's supposed to do. The, the BBE says, and now I say this to you. Do nothing to these men, but let them be. For if this teaching or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. That means it will it'll be basically a failed attempt. It would not prevail, but guess what? It's prevailing because ultimately this is of the Lord. But if it, but if it is of the Most High, you can, you are, you will not be able to overthrow them, and you are in danger of fighting against the Most High. So that's what Esau is doing. He's set up to be that great adversary, ultimately to the Lord, and also to the nation of Israel. This is the Book of Revelation, chapter eleven, verse twelve. It says, "And they heard a great voice from heaven." saying in saying unto them come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud remember yahweh left in a cloud so a it's it's possible that the chariot that delivers the nation of israel just might it might just be one chariot you know we know that the lord is bringing the angels with him but it says in a cloud so it might be one massive gigantic chariot that the Lord comes back in and delivers the whole nation of Israel. And we've seen an uh, example of that a couple years ago, uh, which a video by Dabu 7 was posted, and it was a chariot that was, um, it was a chariot that was the size of earth. It was a UFO, a so-called UFO that was spotted. I'm going to see if I can find the image. I have the video, but there was an image. It was a chariot that was uh, bigger than Earth. I might not be able to find the exact image of it, but there was a chariot that was spotted on a radar that a, uh, by a video put up by Dabu 7 that was bigger than the earth. So, and you know, brothers did videos on it. It was a couple years ago. And um, <clears throat> I remember uh, Apostle Tahar had did a video. He said the Lord could deliver the whole nation of Israel with that one chariot, which it backs up what the scripture says. They sent ascended into heaven in a cloud. We ultimately know that the Lord is going to come back with a, with thousands of chariots. Also, though, 
but the chariot that was in that video was massive it was massive and that's the same day that esau shut down the internet well actually youtube for almost an hour i'm pretty sure brothers remember that for all the newcomers that happened in i believe 2021 or 2020 i believe it was sometime in december which youtube has shut down for a period of an hour because and we believe it was because of that that chariot sighting and it scared the hell out of Esau so bad that he shut the internet. He shut YouTube down for an hour, man. <laughs> See, that proves, man, these devils are scared, man. But um, I don't see the picture. But um, if I can, I most likely probably put it in the description. Or yeah, bear with me one second. I might have it in my um inside of my uh, on my channel in my um watch later or my saved videos. Just bear with me one second. Let me um get this cue this up real quick. See if I can find that video. Here it is. Call Liam Lay about Chanel shot. An object of this size. There it is. Making its way through space, caught on the cam. And it seems like when they pick this up right around frame 160, they cut it out. You're going to see it makes it right out here. All right. So this is the object that they was talking about. This is three years ago. Oh, uh, and 2020. Yeah. The same year, uh, the March 7th, 2020, which is the same year. What happened? CV-19. All right. So it says huge wheel like object caught creeping in space. Now this right here is the earth. This is earth. This little ball right here, this is earth. And look at the size of this compared to earth. Here. Right out to back here, and then they're gonna cut it. This is earth. That is earth right there. Terra. See? Gone. They clip it. See? That is earth. So as you can see. This is Earth, and this is that chariot. This is the chariot, and this is Earth. <laughs> yeah, that's a better view of it. See? Look at the comparison. Look at the comparison inside. So the Lord can deliver the whole nation of Israel with this chariot. Or he probably got ones bigger than that, man. We all know the army. Of, we all know the arms of the Lord, man. The Lord... He's going to show his power, best believe that. So let's go back. Just want to put that on screen. Revelation chapter 11, verse 12. And they and they heard, they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in a, in a cloud. And, the, and their enemies beheld them. So they're going to, the, the, our enemies are going to see. Two thirds of the nation of Israel is going to see their enemies getting delivered. Well, ultimately, their brothers getting delivered, which they refuse to listen to Yahweh Bashem Al Shah, so they're not going to be delivered. Verse 3 13, it says, In the same hour was a great earthquake, which is what? The nuclear destruction. This is why they have to come up. They This is why they're going to come up hither. That's why the Lord said, Come up hither, because they have to be beamed up into the chariots before this happens, the great earthquake, which is the destruct, nuclear destruction. In the same hour was a great, there was a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell. Now let's get that. Let's cover that real quick. Bear with me. Papa Kasha. Now the ten feet, the ten part of the city fell represents the represents america as a whole because america is split up into 10 fema zones as you can see one two three four five six no i'm sorry six seven eight nine ten and those are roman numerals by the way so this uh this the 10 part of the city represents america
ten the ten FEMA regions. So let's go back. Let's read it again. Revelations eleven and thirteen. It says, "In the same hour there was a great earthquake, which is the nuclear destruction, and the tenth party of the city fell, which as a whole that represents America as a whole. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. Now the word seven represents completion. So in the earthquake, in the destruction, there were slain of men seven thousand. That means everybody's gonna die." And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of Israel. So remember, everybody that's on the souls of America, that's on this place, is going to die in this great earthquake, which is represents the nuclear destruction. Ain't going to be no deliverance for those who are not part of the elect. If you're not on them chariots, you're going to die. And you on the souls of America? No matter where you at, you're going to die. This place is going to be laid flat. So it ain't nowhere you can hide from the Rafi Habash and So the only way out is up. Hey, that's the lesson. <laughs> the only way out is up. <laughs> ain't no other way out. Verse 14 says, the second woe is past, which there were three world woes, and they're going to be uh which represents the world wars. Um, first world war one. World War II, and behold, it says, and behold, the third world coming quickly, which is the last war, the third world's war, you know. The word woe. Means death and ultimately death, destruction, misery, lamentation. It means to lament. Where well, it says great sorrow or distress, often used hyperbolically. It says things that cause sorrow or distress or troubles. That's what's coming upon the world. What does the slang word woe mean? Grief, regret. Woe in the Bible refers to grief, anguish, affliction, wretchedness, calamity, or, tr or trouble. It can be used as an ex- Exam, uh, exclamation of judgment on others, misfortune on oneself, sadness over others, and may give give way to forgiveness, comfort, and deliverance. What is the meaning of woe in one word? Woe is very great sadness. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just. I was trying to see was something pop up when I put put in woes of war because that's what war causes. War causes uh, misery, affliction. The effects of war cause nothing but misery. World War One, World War Two, and World War Three. They cause woes, man. They cause misery. They cause anguish. They cause sadness. Because a lot of people gotta, you know, a lot of people die. Lots of people die. Families are ripped apart. You know, people are relocated. It's a lot 
of negative effects when it comes to war. That's why the scriptures compared to war, misery, because that's ultimately what it brings. Um. So, a quick recap of this of this lesson: vehicles of salvation. That is referring to the UFOs that the Bible speaks of. Um, it speaks about it in cold terms, if you will. So ultimately, salvation is coming for the nation of Israel. And if you're not on a chariot and you're on the souls of America, you are going to die. There's no there's no way around it. The only way to uh, basically be delivered is through Yahweh Bashem Shah. Ain't no other way. So... The UFOs are our salvation and their Esau's destruction. And the Lord is watching this place by the chariots, using the chariots and the angels. And the time is going to come when he, he's going to send his son, Yahweh Shah back. And he's going to deliver the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel, which is the elect, are going to be delivered. They're going to be saved. So Lord willing, this lesson was through the spirit of power of Yahweh Bashem Shah was edifying. I'm going to close it out by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem, Rakakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who are willing to teach well. Must peace, love, and salutation to the brothers doing his work in truth and sincerity. I want to say Shalom. Kwame Asha'Allah. Wa'abai Baba. Wa'abai Adwan. Shalom.